Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about this. Sorry, just a minute. Okay, I'll try that again. Hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'd like to talk about this. This is the Cena Striker helmet and uh, I recently bought this because it was on sale at Sports Bike Shop. Um, it wasn't cheap, it was still around £400 but I was in the market for a new helmet and I was looking for a full face as opposed to a modular. I have been using a modular helmet, uh, that is the um, Shark Evo S and I found that in heavy rain, which is something that happens very, very often here in the UK, that the visor would leak. So I was in the market for a new helmet, I saw this one on sale and what drew me to it was the fact that it has the Cena uh, communications and Bluetooth built in as standard as well as a couple of other nice little features which I will speak about on this video. Um, this isn't really a re review because I don't really feel like I'm qualified to review a helmet. Uh, there is a review of this particular helmet from at the time of recording this about a year ago on a channel called Revzilla which is a big motorcycling reviews um, not website but it is a website but a YouTube channel uh, but there were some other things that I was looking for in regards to information about this helmet that weren't answered in that video. So hopefully I could answer some of those for other people who are searching for more information about this helmet. So this is the Cena Striker. I'm always a bit wary of whether or not it's Cena or Senna, but I'm going to go with Cena because I think that's how it's pronounced or how it's certainly pronounced in other videos. So we'll go with that. And uh, yeah, I will uh, hopefully take you through some of the features of this lid. Okay, I'm going to change the camera angle now so you're not just looking at my face and we'll focus on the helmet itself. Okay, so this is the Cena Striker. As you can see, it is a full face helmet and uh, the visor clips on here with this little sort of nodule which clips into the, uh, the actual visor itself and it does a great job of keeping the visor down. Um, the, it, it, I mean, it, it has several stages of open, but to be honest, I, ever, I only ever use it either open or closed. I won't, I won't have it like that, for example. But it's nice that it does have that kind of ratcheting system. Um, it also has an internal sun visor, which is operated by this uh, little catch here. So you push it up and it pops down like so. Push it down and it just goes back up again and clicks securely into place. Uh, there are a number of vents on the on the helmet. You have your chin vent and then there's several on top which are all open and closed as you would expect. And um, yeah I mean when you're riding into the wind you, you can close these quite easily with your gloved hand uh, and they do produce quite a nice uh, cooling effect inside the helmet. Um, one thing to know is that the visor does not have a pin lock, as you can probably see. Uh, but it, what it does have is a, a treated inside, so it doesn't mist up uh, when you're breathing or in the rain. And obviously, you've got this kind of like breath deflector thing here at the front, which actually blows your breath down out of the vent. So it doesn't. I, I, in the in the sort of two to three weeks that I've owned this helmet, I haven't had any instances of the visor fogging up, which is one of the main things that I wanted a closed, a fully sort of enclosed face helmet because on my on my Shark Evo S uh, I would find that in the rain water would come in from the sides and if it got any water on the inside of the helmet, uh, on the inside of the visor because it didn't have a pin lock either and it was just treated, uh, it, would, it would fog up and would become quite sort of dangerous in the rain. Uh, I haven't had any problems like that with this helmet. The, the visor fits very snug against the seal around the, uh, the the open section of the of the visor hole if you want to call it that so yeah no no issues with the the visor uh, or the vents uh, that I've had so far I did note in another review that they said that these vents felt quite cheap and a bit tack a bit plasticky I I can't really see what the, what the problem is with those they they open and they close quite easily uh, especially if you're on the bike and you want to just quickly get these open or closed then they do the job uh, well enough. Likewise with the sun visor it's quite a big uh, notch there that you can get your sort of big gloved thumb on to just kind of whack open and closed and likewise with this 
a fairly rudimentary system of having this kind of post that sticks out of the bottom of the helmet here. Um, it does a good job of keeping the thing closed. It's quite basic, but it works. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, what's it like to ride with? Um, well, it's very quiet, uh, and I'll talk about the sound and all the technology inside it in a minute. But just as a standard helmet, if you don't use any of the electronics that are inside it, it does a really good job of keeping the, uh, the road noise out. Again, most of my recent experience has come using a modular helmet, so road noise is a big problem with those. Um, but this is, is very quiet in comparison, certainly to the Evo uh, ES that I've been using. One thing I did notice is that if you're not using a like a neck protector or a neck sort of ruffle around your around your throat, you do get air that comes in um, underneath here that kind of rushes up inside the helmet. So you have to kind of keep your head slightly pointing down to stop that. Uh, that can be a little bit annoying, but otherwise it's um, it's a fine helmet to wear and got no issues with the the comfort levels. Um, so the, the the actual helmet itself is made of uh, fiberglass. Uh, it has a DOT rating and also an ECE rating. It's got an E1 stamp on it on the uh, on the visor there and also on the chin strap. E1, I believe, is that it was tested in Germany. So um, it does meet those safety requirements. Uh, and yeah, it's very comfortable. This is a small, because I've got a small head. Don't know if you could tell from the earlier part of this video. Uh, it fits very snug and um, I'm just very happy with it. I, I don't get any of like the head wobbling in the wind that I've had uh, with previous helmets, probably because they weren't really fitted very well to me. Um, and I've ridden uh, both my Royal Enfield and my Phaser with this helmet on, and they've both been perfectly fine. No sort of head wobbling or wind buffeting at uh, motorway speeds. So that's been um, a bit of a revelation, really, because that's one of the things that really kind of put me off um, riding the bike uh, at any kind of speed uh, was the head sort of movement but yeah this has been fine uh, so the, one of the main well there's two selling points to this helmet for me uh, the first one is the the intercom and the bluetooth connectivity uh, I know that some people say that you shouldn't really listen to music while you're on a bike because you need to have all your wits around you. I do agree with that, but it is nice if you're on a long journey on a motorway, for example, just to put like a podcast on or something or some music. So this is the control module on the on the Cena Striker. You've got four buttons here. Uh, the plus and the minus, as you would imagine, are for like changing uh, radio channels. There is a radio built into this as well, an FM radio, or uh, putting the volume higher and lower. Um, and you also have uh, a little sort of light here that tells you when it's active. So it's really easy to actually turn on once you've set it up. The setup is actually quite a, a pain because you have to connect it to the app on your phone, which is not the best. And then you have to connect the app and the helmet to Wi-Fi to update the helmet to the latest firmware to then be able to actually even use the app. And to be honest with you, it was an absolute nightmare the instructions are not very helpful at all it's just basically trial and error is it going to update is it not once you get it updated it's fine but you need the app and you need the helmet to be updated to the latest firmware to even use any of the features of this helmet so um, once you have got it all set up it's, it's as simple as this you literally press those two buttons together the light comes on and then it's on You'll see that on the back of the helmet, the uh, the light is already set to on because in the app it saves your settings. Because I set the um, the light to being on because I rode at dusk a few days ago, it just stays on, which is a nice feature. You can see there it's got the ECE rating on the back as well. So ECE are 22.05. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean... Yeah, if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about buying one of these. What's the point of all this stuff on the side? Well, you can connect it to your phone uh, via the app, via Bluetooth, and you can listen to music, you can uh, activate Siri or whatever Android device you've got. You can speak into the microphone, which is embedded in the, in the chin guard. Uh, you can just about see it there, hopefully. Maybe not, but it's, it's here where my finger is. And it, it actually works really well. You know, you can say, you know, Siri, hey Siri, you know, play music, something like that. Hopefully my phone doesn't pick that up. It's just on the table. Um, and it will. It has actually picked it up, unfortunately. So just give me a sec, I'll stop that. That shows how sensitive it is. <laughs> uh, if you've got like, Apple Music or Tidal or 
you know, Spotify, anything like that, it will just start playing music from a playlist or something that it thinks you like, which is actually quite nice. You don't have to mess about. I'm just going to turn it off so it doesn't start doing things as I'm talking. And you can activate maps, you know, if you've got like a, a Bluetooth um, GPS on your dash on your bike. Um, I use my phone just on a little holder, so I've got, you know, maps there as well. Uh, the sound is actually done by Harman Kardon. Do you remember Harman Kardon's sound sticks? They were like the, the big thing to have in the in the, in the the early 2000s. One of my um, roommates at university had had some of those things, and I always used to look at them with envy because I couldn't afford them. But, uh, yeah, he had some of those attached to his iMac, and they looked great, and they sounded great. And they, they're the same people who do the, um, the headset uh, audio for this. Cena, I believe, are a big name in motorcycle uh, intercom systems alongside people like Cardo. And another great feature of this bike is it's got like this thing called Open Mesh. I haven't actually used it yet because I don't actually know anybody else who's got a motorcycle helmet that's got Bluetooth or a, um, an intercom system built into it. So I've not been able to use it. But I have made phone calls off it while I've been on the bike and the sound quality is superb. Crystal clear audio from me speaking to them on the phone. And likewise, through the help, through the uh, speakers, um, super clear audio uh, from the person on the other end of the phone. So that's great. Um, and yeah, I, I will put some footage in here of the of the app. Like I said, it's not brilliant, but it works eventually. And through the app, you can activate the FM radio. You can activate the uh, the light on the back of the helmet. So you've got different modes of illumination on the uh, LED tail light. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with it. I, I don't really know what else to say about the helmet at this point. Um, the visor's great, doesn't let any water in, as you would imagine for a helmet of this cost. And um, yeah, some of the things I've noticed about it are like build quality. So one thing I noticed the other day was on the front of the helmet, I don't know if you can see this, where the, where the vent is, that's not completely straight. Can you see that? So that's something that I, I spotted the other day, which obviously is not great on a helmet of this price. Um, and also some of the finishing on like the the section up here where the the sun visor comes down, you can see where the it's kind of frayed already, which is not brilliant. But um, these are minor things. Um, a note about charging on the back here: you do get something like 18 hours worth, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'll put a correction here of like audio and sound and things. Uh, I've only had to charge it up once, and it's just been full for for weeks. The battery. Um, and you get this little kind of, it's almost like the old, the old MagSafe connector that you used to get on Apple Macs. It just kind of connects via, by a magnet. You do also get a, a little kind of adapter with that, that allows you to use USB-C, which is a nice touch. And the, uh, the locking mechanism, the chin strap is one of these ratcheted ones where you just, so just slide it in like that and then you can just pull that tab and it just releases. Uh, the liner is removable, everything's removable and washable and um, yeah that is the Cena Striker. I'm very happy with it so far and I know that there are you know better makes, the more proven makes like Arai and Shoei and things like that but um, yeah for the for the amount of tech that's involved in this helmet and with the safety ratings that it does actually have uh, I'm quite happy with it. So as I said not really a review, just me waffling but hopefully if you're looking at one of these and you're thinking about getting one there are quite a few kind of middling reviews as, as to how good it is but um i'm perfectly happy with it so uh, yeah hopefully this will help you make a, an informed choice if you've got any questions about the helmet just put them in the comments and i'll try and answer them when i get when you know when i see them uh, maybe i'll be back with another video in about five months i, I do like to keep a bit of a gap because uh life happens anyway thanks for watching and uh yeah cheers